Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we begin by pondering our moon lander which failed us last time. Well not the whole lander, just the lander engine failed us and killed Jeb. And of course if we tried it again maybe it wouldn't fail but we can't really take that chance can we? Uh, it already had a bit too much thrust I felt and so we can't really put two of them on here even if we could tilt them through the center of mass, which is probably unlikely because that's got changed pretty drastically as the tank's empty. Uh, so yeah, putting two of them is not an option. It's a methane oxygen engine, so we have methane oxygen tanks, and we don't have smaller methane oxygen engines that would work, uh, especially since we want throttling so for the landing and everything. So, yeah, there's a lot of hypergolic stuff, but not really methane and oxygen. So we can't replace it with two smaller engines of the same type, I think. And that is a problem. Um, we've got some of the other engines, but those won't throttle either. So there's the Aeon engine, but that's way too powerful. So, yeah, what I'm thinking of is having two abort motors uh, in that we'll rely on the main engine but we'll have two extra engines that can activate in case the main engine fails. Hopefully not the main engine and the abort motors fail at the same time. But it's critical, of course, that the abort motors use methane and oxygen, right? Uh, if, they use the same, uh, if they use a different fuel, we can't pack that. Um, the other option is to switch everything out for MMH and NTO. However, that hurts our efficiency. So that could be a problem. But let's uh, see that situation. Basically, we're using this engine, which gets a 343.9 in vacuum. And the MMH and MON3 is 318.2 seconds in vacuum. And it's less thrust, which might be helpful, actually. Uh, but yeah. It'll be carrying more propellant though, which is not helpful because again, it's less efficient, so it'll have to carry more propellant. But if we do use that, then we can use two of these as the abort motors. Uh, they'll provide 24 kilonewtons in the case of an abort, and they use the same propellant. The other option is to try and get some other technology that does have more methane oxygen engines. There should be a methane oxygen version of this engine here. Let me move that. This one's kerosene and oxygen, roughly uh, supposed to be similar to an R uh, RD-68. Uh, and there is a methane oxygen version uh, numbered SE-2008, if we wait for that technology. Uh, but I don't want to wait for that technology. So, hmm. The abort motors don't have to have throttling. If we're aborting, we're just going straight back to orbit, and we're not going to do the landing. Or in the case of how we had it where Jeb died, uh, we were already on a sim, so we would just continue to abort to orbit. Uh, and anyway, they have better efficiency than the pressure-fed one. So the thing is they don't throttle, so that's the downside. Well, okay, let's see if we replace the methane oxygen with, the, with this MMH and MON3 version. This is very similar to the Soviet lunar lander setup. It had the same sort of thing. Looks like the interior, my, uh, I've got the normal flip the wrong way on that. Oh well. It had the same sort of idea. But 20 tons is too much, and now we definitely don't have any margin. But that's because we've got the port ones working. These are not as efficient as that one. I guess we could get this A. That can throttle down further. It's not more power. Well, it's a little bit more powerful. I guess we should. But we m might want to use a different lander can. We could just use the Mark One pod. That would be much much lighter and cheaper. Um, much much lighter and cheaper. <laughs> There's also the lander cans, the Mark One lander cans. In some technology, we haven't unlocked. We're really making it hard on ourselves using this when we're only going to be landing one person. Let's take, uh, let's say Moonlander 2, and let's take a look at the tech tree. 
we hadn't really decided on anything, but yeah, we've got the Mark 1 Lander Can here and Lander Can Advanced. And maybe, it, I mean, there's no reason to carry a cabin that holds three Kerbals for the purpose of landing one Kerbal. And then this is one Kerbal and there's two Kerbals. They're cheaper and they'll make things a lot easier. Maybe it is time for me to not make things so hard on myself. Uh, but the engine, the methane oxygen abort engine that I was talking about is this one. It would definitely get us into orbit really fast, if especially if there's two of them, because it's got a lot of thrust. Well, it's not got 85 kilonewtons. I originally designed it for 85 kilonewtons and then figured out that it would only get 61.3. Go figure. Uh, did some math wrong there. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, uh, so that's another possibility. We can't quite get both. I'm going to go for the advanced flight control and get that. So 149 days until we get that. Let's take a look at our contracts. I noticed something earlier. We've got a lot of rescue and recovery contracts from orbit of the moon. So we don't have to risk any of the Kerbals we have right now, we can just rescue one of the Kerbals and then land them. So I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> uh, we, we might fail the contract, but actually compared to failing any of the other contracts, failing these is not too bad for some reason. I did not configure these contracts, so... Um, I don't know what orbit they're in, but let's just... They give us so much time, we might as well pick them all up. We can we have demonstrated that we can bring Kerbals back from orbit of the moon, so I'm just gonna Oh well, well we have a contract limit, don't we? We have five active contracts now. Got three moon rescues, Venus surface, and then the stationary orbit of Deimos. Which I don't know when we need to go for. Also there's still a human orbital. But that one has the tight duration. Let's make sure that all these did have the generous timing. Yeah. Okay. Three. Well, we could do that with a single Lynx. So. We we're okay on that. We we're recovering the previous Lynx capsule. Let's finish that. I mean, this is possible. It's just that our launcher and the fact that our pad is only at 800 tons. Uh, limits us a little bit. Well, uh, dumping some of the Delta V, we can get to 18. Oh yeah, the thrusters on the cabin use methane and oxygen though, and they're not configurable. So that's a downside. They they won't be able to use the same fuel as that. Uh, yeah, that's not going to be good. We're just gonna wait for the Mark 1 lander can, darn it. This is overkill. So, advanced flight control. For the sake of future proofing, I think I'll use the Mark 1 lander can advanced. Now, this the stats of this are not configured by me. They're configured by a realism overhaul itself. I just fix the price and make sure to place it in the right place in the tech tree. But otherwise, the weight and all that, that's, that's realism overhaul's fault. So... <laughs> Uh, we'll leave it at that. The price has a logic to it. Um, it is obviously cheaper than the cabin for three. And we will purchase it. So we're going for the two person cabin. And we'll make it hypergolic this time. And so I think I'll unlock the 400 Newton RCS blocks. They might be a little bit too powerful for something this... Well, no, they're about, they'll are about they be about the same size as the lunar module. So, okay. Oh, it's pretty big, though. <laughs> That's pretty big. Uh, maybe we'll go with the 100s. There's also these, which poke out. But leave this be and its configuration is already MH and Mon 3 but we can increase the tech level oh we can get another tech level there okay so the A version the 1003A and yes we need high pressure tanks so let's do that 
and we also need the abort motors it's two even with the mark one lander can it's not that light it's not like revolutionary here let's reduce the utilization just so that we can fit the landing legs properly Fifteen tons already. Yeah, well, this is the best location if you don't want the thrusters flying directly at them. How much is this? And need seven hundred watts. Somehow we oh well, uh, we're probably not efficient because we've got the abort motors on the same. There we go. A little bit still fifteen tons still. <laughs> the methane helps. And I don't think we had a ladder yet, which is crazy. So we'll have to have whoever lands hop back in again. Uh, that thruster does look like it's hitting the panel right now. If the panel tilts, it's going to be bad too. That's why I originally put these at the top. I think I'll just go back to putting them at the top. We'll have a few at the, uh, some supplementary ones downstairs. That's actually 160. I need to change the description. It's 160 newtons. Okay, well, that looks like a lander to me. It'll need comms too, because it has to be sent independently. Just trying to think where the solar panel would bump into the antenna there. Okay, I think it's good enough. Okay, moon lander three, I guess. I wonder why the black for the recolor UI ends up being like a gray. It's not metallic. Oh, let me. Uh, well, metallic does no. I need a specular. Whoa. Well, let's give it some specular while we're at it. Anyway, but yeah. Fully zero still doesn't seem as black as this stripe, for instance. Well, yeah, barely able to launch with the 800 ton limit. So, still tough. But alright, uh, we certainly don't want any kerbals in. As far as our food, water, and oxygen, three days worth for two crew. So probably more than enough. Maybe we could dump some of that, but... We don't have to worry about that right now. Okay, so it'll take 282 days to build that, but let's speed that up a little bit. And, well, we don't have to worry about R&D right now. So, yep, we're at 9 build points per day. And let me edit this pod so that we can bring the Kerbals back. Okay, I've done all the servicing on the old Lynx module, put back the air cap and the launch escape system. And I replaced the parachutes just in case, and I've changed up the service module again. Uh, this time we will have the same engine that we're using for the lander engine on the lander, uh, so that we get more data points on it. And uh, since we have none, so that's a little bit of a worry. But I put the auxiliary system, the same one that we have on the lander, the two SE12KHs. They're not as efficient as this engine uh, by a little bit, but uh, they are also pressure fed, same propellants. So we'll be able to use them. They have a lot more data units and less uh, prone to failure, uh, 0.67 versus 2%. So there's that. And so same system that we have on the lander, so we get more data points. And I've put slightly more powerful uh, solar panels this time, I think. Uh, we've got the long ones. And I've moved the RCS thrusters that weren't working from the top uh, back down to here and pointed them sort of at an angle so that they can work <laughs> that might be helpful uh, so hopefully that all is good for us but uh, I don't know if I want to put comms on here to make it independent I guess maybe we'll send it without crew that's probably for the best um, well might, might might not be for the best because without crew we uh, might lose control over it at an inopportune time of course 
Uh, so, but let's let's go with comms. I'll use the same antennae. I mean, that might be overkill, actually. But I'm pretty sure a whole bunch of the Cumutron 16s would work too. We haven't even unlocked those. Um, this direct antenna could work. This is actually this. I, I keep mentioning it, but this is a relay antenna in stock, so it's very confusing sometimes. This one actually, uh, this one costs more anyway. It's lighter by a little bit though, and of course its form factor is nicer. Of course we could use the CubeSat uh, Helix antenna, but I'm gonna rule that cheaty for my purposes, so we'll just leave that be. So we'll put two just for balance, and that should not get in the way of anything. A little bit lower. Once it's coming back in the atmosphere, it better have Kerbals in, so we can dump the comms like that. Okay, so we've got two antennae like that. Hopefully that didn't hurt our Delta V too much. It's a little bit tough to say how much we ought to have. We're pushing the limits again here, as far as the launch is concerned. Yep, 800 tons. We're right at that. So we're doing everything we can here. Definitely will not be wanting to send crew initially. We're picking up Kerbals. That is the goal. Now, how much... I don't know if we can pick up all three with this. I've packed a decent amount of fuel, but not that much. So, you know, 2,000... It says 2,200 right now. I saw it saying 2,100 something. I don't know how many orbital maneuvers we can do to get to... The Kerbals, we might only be able to pick up one for all I know. So, yeah. The lander is going to have a tough time if it wants to pick up a separate one. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Uh, so we're going to pay a lot for this. Alright, build list, and this links S3-3. The second build slot, I think, would be if we upgraded the VAB. I'm not 100% sure. 400,000 doesn't seem too bad. Maybe we should upgrade the launch pad too, but that's 2 million. That would get us a rocket that can be larger than 800 tons. But, you know, we seem to be doing all right with 800 tons, right? Right? Uh, maybe we'll stick to that. Uh, flag planting, though. How much was flag planting? 2 million. At least the, the contract for the crewed lunar landing does not actually, that's a milestone one, does not actually require a flag, so I guess it'll be alright. Again, we'll have to demonstrate that before we actually try to do it. It is 2021. <laughs> We're almost real time now. Okay, well, hmm, I'm wondering whether to spend some extra money here. I'm very tight pursed, if you will. I'll do the VAB upgrade. I think it'll give us a second build slot, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Build time improved, but we didn't get a second build slot. I guess it's on the... maybe it's on the next one? Oh, well, there's... oh, we have to put upgrade points in the second build slot, that's right. There we go. Now I'll be building at a really slow pace right now, but I don't want to spend more right now. Okay, we're we're gonna pass real time here. It's March 9th in here. And I'm going to go ahead and warp to complete. Boy, those Kerbals around the moon are gonna be hanging out for a while. <laughs> okay, so here we go for the rollout of Moonlander 3. Even though we didn't have a Moonlander 2, that was just a, a temporary idea that did not actually get a launch. And launch without anybody, please. It's wiggling a little bit. Let me auto strut to root part just in case. Neon rocket is 
looking neon. Yep, that's just a geostationary satellite. Okay, what well, relative inclination is pretty good. We could probably launch right now. S uh, it doesn't have SAS. The Mark One Lander can doesn't have SAS. Hmm. We can use Smart ASS. We can use MechJeb. It's not impossible. It's just inconvenient. But we'll try it. Okay. Ignition. Putting another unit on will obviously involve more mass, which we did not plan for. I don't know what kind of lunar module wouldn't have some sort of stability unit. So. Red and purple rocket underway. Okay, booster set. That seems like a lot of stuff going on at the same time. Let's reevaluate that. Okay, next stage. Next stage. Whoa, that fairing went all over the place. And fairings. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, 219 by 191. And we'll have 600 out of this stage for the trans uh, for capture after we transfer. And we could probably just keep burning, actually. Orloff. Orloff is in a high orbit. The other two are in a low equatorial orbit. Our lander definitely wants to get into a low equatorial orbit. Probably do a mid-course adjustment. We'll wait in orbit. We've got boil off though. Let's just go. <laughs> Let's just uh, node uh, RCS ignition. Let's just get over there. But if we, I darn it with the boil off, we can't use this stage to capture. Hmm. Why did my subassembly not have the MLI layers? Yeah, no MLI. That's not good. Oh, let's get the antennae out. Okay. Oh, that was a little bit too soon. Well, we are recharging. Electric charge is being replenished, so that at least is okay. Since the lander and the, the return capsule both use the same propellant now, instead of one using methane oxygen and the other using MH and Mon3, it's possible for the return capsule to also top off the lander. So that might be helpful. We do have a lot of RCS on this stage. Now we're not going to pick up Munber until we're ready to bring him back, otherwise we will retrieve him and have only like three days worth of food, water, and oxygen and Munber would die. So that is not going to happen right now. We'll just wait in orbit until we can get the return vessel over here. Uh, well, it looks like we're going to have some inclination with respect to the target either way. So we'll probably capture loose and do everything. Okay, so that's another correction. 26. How's the boil off? Well, let's say if we go... Let's see what the boil off is in this orientation and if we point at the sun. Oops, come on, keep that up. I don't know if it'll make any difference. And right now it seems to be increasing rather than decreasing here. Yeah, if uh, orientation is supposed to have any effect, I don't see it. Of course, in real life it would. And yeah, it's all going to be gone. 
Maybe we should have. Maybe we should send a depot over with MMHM on three. Well, that's the end of the Delta V in the stage, but we can still use its RCS for this correction, I think. Okay, coming to the end of the long RCS burn here, finally. Oh, 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 oh no, I didn't want the periapsis going down. Oh, okay, it's spinning around now. Okay, um, hold on. Kill rotation. Okay, that'll have to do for now. We'll keep the stage for its RCS, though. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI. Just go to the node here and get that periapsis up. But we'll be taking a lot of fuel out of the lander in order to capture. A little bit late on this. But... Separation. And ignition. Okay, we'll hold it right there. And then we can correct the inclination all the way up there. We won't bring it into a low orbit just yet because... That would be... We would do that when we are ready to rendezvous, I think. We'll just correct the inclination and then... Wait until we can get the return capsule over here. Hopefully we've gotten some data units. Oh, we lost community. Oh no, we lost electric charge. Oh, wait. Um, Where's the sun? Come on, game. Should definitely be recharging like that. Okay, 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 node. Well, that's as good as I need it to be. Okay, sun. Uh, sundown will be fine. Well, I, I don't know whereabouts the moon is, but uh, there it is. Okay, so Earth, moon, and our little lander. It's recharging, but now we need to turn to making sure that we get the return vessel over here. Okay, well, adding the MLI layers to this upper stage, really, I guess it would be spray-on foam insulation or something like that. The MLI layers wouldn't be appropriate for uh, launch stage, but that's more for payloads. But it, took, it takes about 12 days, it looks like. So, yep, well, we have to do that. I think... I'm wondering whether we should... Uh, oh, yes, well, we'll have to reduce the amount of RCS on this stage because we we're over mass by 0.3, it looked like, just about. So let's reduce the size of the RCS tanks, which were copious to begin with. I think that might be good. Now, as far as... Well, we're not doing the landing contract, but I'm wondering if it actually requires us to... I mean, the crewed lunar landing here... I think, yeah, it does require us to actually launch with crew. Uh, so, maybe, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether it requires us to launch the crew or not. As opposed to re uh, res rescue them, so. Yeah, that's a good question. Anyway, uh, let's get this over there. I don't know, maybe we should launch the depot. Let me try and mock up the depot and see how long it would take to build it. First, I'll see exactly how much fuel we're short in the lander, and let's just get a depot that would get that amount of fuel over there. Okay, well, I've cooked up this MH and Mon 3 depot. I've got locked fuel here, and it's about 8 tons. And we've got the working fuel, if you will, what will help it maneuver around and get into orbit around the moon. Maybe not get into orbit around the moon. This can get into orbit around the moon. We've got the MLI layers. Once it hit 100, does it? Um, yeah, so the MLI layers are there. And we will see if that works out for us. But I locked this fuel because it's not in the high pressure tank just for... I mean, I, I think you could put a little electric pump to pump the stuff from a non-high pressure tank into a high pressure tank and it wouldn't be too bad. But anyway, this is the working fuel in the high pressure tank. We are using the same engine to get more data units on it. And of course, docking port, comms, RCS, properly configured. Make sure we have everything working well. And I decided to max it out with relation to the Neon rocket. So it's another Neon rocket launch and we're carrying as much as we can as much as I think we can so yeah we will try and get it over there and I think we'll build it and launch it first and then launch the return capsule 
just for safety's sake, I want this extra fuel over there. So, yep, let us save this and build one. Now, I don't have a good history with depots, mind you. Somehow, my depot launches always tend to mess up, so... I call it a depot with some trepidation. At least in career modes, I have had a bad time with depots. But we'll see. Behold the neon rocket in all its glory in daylight. <laughs> uh, I think I, I might need to make a custom body for this. I, I'm not sold on the exact pattern here. I mean, I run the red and purple, but this, this could be done differently. Okay, ignition. And launch. We are using the early controllable core on the payload, by the way. We are past the speed of sound. Everything looking good so far. It's looking a lighter shade of purple now. That was not the shade of purple I was aiming for. Okay, booster set. How's the boil off these days? Well, at least it acknowledges we have MLI layers and that heat penetration in milliwatts looks good. It's sure better than kilowatts. Okay, separation and ignition of lots of things. Yep. Let's do it all at once, why don't we? Okay, we're getting close to orbit here. Somewhat lower than the last time. We'll make the other end higher. Alright. 236 by 157, let's say. And we have about the same amount left over. Well, I think I'll do the remainder in the next video. I took some time to plan out what exactly I was going to do, and we have this bonus launch of a fuel depot, so... Now, we'll find us and get the translunar injection done next time. So let me plot it out. Alright, so... This is ready to go to the moon, and it doesn't have much boil off. Right, right. I mean, this does have some, but not much. And hopefully this stage will help us capture around the moon. And then we'll have a little fuel depot for our lander in particular. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.